Welcome my friends, welcome to another aimless adventure. This one's a bit of a weirdo festival. Or depending on your worldview, maybe you're going to dig it. So check it out. I'm in North Georgia. And, uh, well, when you think of Georgia, you think of peaches. You think of maybe Georgia football. Maybe you think of uh, peanuts. Or that president that came from here back in the 70s. Yeah, uh, those are some of the things Georgia is known for. But one of the things Georgia is also known for, some would say unfortunately, others would say happily they're glad it's here, is this. Oh yeah, the Georgia Guidestones. I think it's time to explore more of this weirdness. Let's do it. This is located in a very sparsely populated I think that's a word that means not a lot of people right off of Interstate 77 or whatever road 77 and they've uh, they put up cameras you can see them here because people have vandalized this and uh, yeah so when you park you walk through this little fence deal right here and there they are there's also a plaque over here we're going to check out. And then another piece of granite right there that explains what some of these things are, like those holes. I don't know if it explains why those are cut out of it. The story of the Georgia Guidestones began in 1979 when a man by the name of Mr. Christian, later known as R.C. Christian, contacted a local quarry company and said, hey, me and a couple of other loyal Americans want to build a monument to conservation. Can you hook us up? Now, they decided, hey, we got this guy who's going to build this monument for us. We need to find the tallest place that we can possibly put it. And that's right off here, Highway 77, Elberton County, in the middle of this field. This is the highest point in the county, apparently. So this deal on the ground here kind of gives you a little bit of idea of what they're going for, or at least what some of this stuff means to the people who did it, built it, and funded it. You can see over here are some of the uh, astronomic features. That's a big word for me. Uh, you've got channel through the stone indicates celestial pole. Horizontal slot indicates annual travel of sun. Sunbeam through the capstone marks noontime throughout the year. And uh, that's from R.C. Christian, pseudonym. Sponsors a small group of Americans who seek the age of reason. Time capsule. Place six feet below this spot to be opened on. No date given. Here's some physical data on it. 19 feet, 3 inches tall. Weighs... 237,746 pounds. Four major stones are 16 feet 4 inches high, each weighing an average of 42,437 pounds. The center stone is 16 feet 4 inches high and weighs 20,957 pounds. The capstone's coming in at 9 feet 8 inches long, 6 feet 6 inches on the wide side. One foot seven inches thick, weighs 24,832 pounds. The support stones, well, I guess you guys can read all that stuff. And it shows right there, quarried from Pyramid Quarries, located three miles west of Elberton, Georgia. If you're interested in what the languages are, in case you're not a linguist like me, this side over here. That's Russian and Chinese, Arabic and Hebrew, Hindi and Swahili, and then of course English and Spanish right there. It says additional information available at Elberton Granite Museum and Exhibit College Avenue, Elberton, Georgia. 
I think that may have something to do with the celestial pole right there. Maybe that's the horizon. That's Russian. It doesn't tell you what that language is right there. Not sure what that one is either. That appears to be some type of Egyptian hieroglyphics. Not certain of that one either. You guys know what these mystery languages are to me. Post them in the comments. Let's take a look at what we actually can read, or at least I can. Be not a cancer on the earth, leave room for nature, leave room for nature. Okay. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. All right. Balance personal rights with social duties. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Can't argue with that one. Let all nations rule eternally, resolving eternal disputes in a world court. Hell no! We're a sovereign nation. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Unite humanity with a living new language. I'm not sure what they're getting at there. But I believe uh, that happened at the Tower of Babel. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Wow, if I didn't know better, I would think that perhaps somebody by the name of Huxley funded this operation, but he's been dead for a while. Maybe it was a Rockefeller, maybe it was Ted Turner, who knows, but that, that screams eugenics, and that is wicked. That's my two cents on it. Y'all can think what you want, but uh, that whole population control thing, that's no bueno. That's jacked up. And why is there a corner cut out of there? Like, there's a corner cut out of one of these, I'll show it to you. And I saw a photo online, I don't know if it was photoshopped or what, but it showed the cut corner had a little square that said 2014 on it. Look out, I, I don't know, or maybe I'll put it right here. Look right there. It's cut out of the corner. And what's interesting is it's on the English side. It's on the, well, the English and, uh, let's see what's on the back of that. No. Just on the English side. So interestingly enough, that little corner cut out right there had a 2014 on it. And now there's no 2014 on it. This thing is getting weirder by the minute. Now, who was R.C. Christian? Some people say they know. Some people say he even wrote a book. Others say the book that was written was not written by him. Although, 
from what I know in that book, whoever wrote it was definitely into eugenics. If you don't know about eugenics, just go ahead and look it up. It was a dark and still is a dark part of American history. And it definitely has its connections with Nazis. That alone is not good. So, hey, y'all can come up with your own conclusion as to who built these or why they built them. I just find it intriguing. I mean, in the middle of nowhere, Georgia, we have this monument to some would say New World Order type stuff. Others would say uh, a love of the land, a love of planet Earth. Who knows? Who knows? It's very mysterious, very intriguing, and it's written in a really weird way, which makes you think, I don't know, something, something not good is behind it. Although, I'm a firm believer that uh, loving one another is the most important thing we can do. As far as some of the other things that are on there, yeah, not into population control. That's, that is nasty stuff. But hey, I don't want to get too deep into it. I'm starting to get dizzy walking around it. Hey, regardless of what you think of this thing, there's one thing for certain. It's weird. And it's kind of cool. And it's odd. And it's concerning. And it's uh, built real well, because that's friggin' granite. That's all I got. I really don't have anything to add. Do your own research, look up your stuff, watch some videos. Be careful of the deep web. The deep web will suck you in. And before you know it, you'll be hanging out with the Bilderbergers which has nothing to do with hamburgers I found out recently. Speaking of that, I'm kind of hungry. Until next time, social network links down below, t-shirts if you want one, Patreon if you want to help support the adventures all. Three dollars or more, you get a postcard from wherever I'm at. If I can find postcards from this, I'm definitely gonna buy them. I mean, there's no gift shop anywhere around, but uh, yeah, maybe some gas stations got them, I don't know. Until next time, adventure on, and uh, Come check this place out if you're ever in North Georgia. See ya! It's a whole bunch of ravens. Oh, that's probably not a good sign. It's a mystery who funded you, Georgia Guidestones. Could it have been the New World Order? I don't know. But somebody paid a pretty penny and you're weird. So weird.